This art is responsible for helping to shape communities and bring them together and to improve the lives of young people. And what these young people provide is this much greater sense of hope for all of us. The hope that this city can be better and do better. Through Play on Philly, we engage 110 kids every day after school, ages 6 through 13. And they choose a standard orchestral instrument. And they receive a group lesson every day, a supportive general music class, and ensemble experience. Playing in orchestras, string orchestras, wind ensembles, choirs, percussion groups. And they present over 25 concerts a year in venues all across Philadelphia and throughout the Philadelphia region. that they're exposed to music every day, five days a week for a couple of hours, that makes their growth exponential. As teachers, we can really dive in and really teach them a lot of stuff, and we have the resource and the time to do that, which is amazing for a teacher. I think the skills you learn when you're studying music are very transferable to pretty much everything else in your life. Learning to focus, you know, and to really learn how to practice, how to acquire a skill, how to um, pretty much just put all your time and energy into something so that you get better at it. And some people never really learn how to do that. We watch our kids grow in so many ways, musically and non-musically. The most important traits that we see our kids developing is the ability to focus, the ability to delay gratification as they pick up a new piece of music and they can't play it. Uh, and to watch them go through the process of, oh, I can't do this, to, okay, let me go back to the steps that we learned. Uh, let me break down, how long do you hold the note? What note is it? Where do you put your fingers? Um, how does your ear tell you that you're hearing this note? Um, so that ability to focus and to persevere through something. As our kids go through this process, we've seen that it has directly correlated to what they're doing in the classroom. In comparison, the school also has an after-school tutoring program. And at the end of the year, we took the average change of grades from the year before and the current year, and we averaged what the kids were doing in reading, math, and science. When we compared those grades to the grades of the kids in the music program, there is no comparison. On average, there was about a nine point difference. So we also looked at the grades of the kids in the sports programs and the other extracurricular programs. And still, when we combine the academic tutoring the sports, and the extracurricular programs. Their average change of grade still weren't greater than the kids in the music program. They have changed because they're contributing to something and they're important. And this has made a drastic impact on their family lives, we've heard, um, their school lives. It's matured them as people and human beings and students um, and family members. The most important factor is just the the stress on social innovation of the kids having an end goal of simply becoming better people, responsible citizens. I feel like we are 
setting a mission and we're accomplishing it, which is actually beautiful. A lot of places say that they do things or have the intention of doing things, then it's really frustrating because it's kind of like what's written on paper. But this is a very unique situation. What I think is happening at POP is um, extraordinary because there's mission involved. It's not just doing music for the sake of doing music. It is with the idea that these kids are going to contribute to their community, to each other's lives, and um, to Philadelphia as a city, and to the world around them through learning how to play an instrument. And that's what I think the difference is. Play on Philly is all about providing the impact in these kids' lives that they need to be successful later on. I would have never thought years ago that an orchestra could be responsible for the type of pride that we see in our kids and their parents and in the people that come in here. Oh, well, it's great to be here. Um, there are so many things to, to, to talk about. I mean, mainly, I was trained as a professional musician at the Curtis Institute of Music and graduated in 2009 and really wanted to find a way to make a meaningful connection to the people around me. Um, it wasn't good enough to just sit in Carnegie Hall, um, even playing with the best conductors like Alan Gilbert or Charles Dutois, um, and to just present music and people would come in and say, yeah, really good. They would clap and they would go home. Um, you know, I can't believe that I'm sitting here saying now today um, that I would rather, you know, give up a Carnegie Hall performance. Um, but as you can see in this brief video, this is what it all has been given up for. So there's, well, let, let me give you a little snapshot of Philadelphia. There are about approximately 200,000 kids Half of those kids, about 100,000 of them, um, will not graduate from high school. About 70,000 of those 200,000 kids live at or below the poverty line. That creates a lot of stress in the lives of these kids that are just fighting to, I don't know, have a good meal, to live in a safe neighborhood, to go to a safe school um, with good teachers. And then if we make that magnifying glass just a little bit larger, Looking at the 110 kids that we currently engage in Play on Philly, three of those kids will spend the rest of their life in prison before their 19th birthday. It's going to cost a little bit over $2 million per student to lock them up for the rest of their life. 32 of our kids will spend at least one year in prison. That costs about $35,000 a year. Of those 32 kids, believe it or not, 24 and a half of, of them will end up spending another year in prison, if not longer. But the worst number is about 64 of our kids that will end up on some type of permanent government subsidy in the form of housing vouchers, daycare vouchers, uh, food stamps, uh, health care, all of these, these things that end up taking money away from taxpayers. And they'll get up to about $43,000 a year of government aid on average. So we look at all of this money that is being spent, and we ask ourselves the question, why can't we invest more money in education or in infrastructure? Why are arts being eliminated from schools? Why are after-school programs being eliminated, pre-kindergarten programs, dozens of schools getting closed? This just doesn't affect Philadelphia. I know the effects even <clears throat> come out here to Lower Marion. Well, what happens is that all of this money gets funneled into another part of our society that we really ignore. And that is, again, locking kids in prisons and providing all of these government subsidies. And that spending is increasing. Let's look at what has happened with the economy, all of the jobs being lost. In 10 years, we're going to be spending much more money on everything that I mentioned from prisons. We're going to be spending less money on education. Class sizes will get larger. And everybody, pretty much sitting in this room, we're going to have to take care of these problems. We'll have to be the ones to pay for it. So 
to me, I think it's pretty simple. Successful adults, they have developed this very important skill of focus and hard work. By focusing on you know, one thing, they learn how to do it really well, and they get paid well to do it. If you don't learn these types of skills, you end up doing a job that anybody could do, and you don't make that much money doing it. Um, and what we've seen is that if we can develop this type of skill set within these kids, then we will drastically increase their chances of becoming a more productive citizen. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, if you're black or white. I've seen all types of kids fall off on the deep end. And a lot of it is due to just those couple of skills that simply need to be built. How do you finish high school? How do you get into a good college? How do you secure a good job? How do you make good decisions for your own personal life, your own personal health? So I'm a little bit biased. I think it can be, be beautifully accomplished through music. Uh, about three years ago, I learned about a revolutionary program in Venezuela called El Sistema. Uh, Venezuela is one of the most dangerous countries in the world, but there's a big miracle happening there. There are half a million kids that are involved in classical music training every day after school for at least four hours a day. They practice on Saturdays for at least six hours, Saturdays and oftentimes Sundays. And these kids are playing Brahms and Beethoven, but they're still dancing to salsa and all of the pop music that we listen to. And what's really remarkable about that program is that they have found this way of tying in social development and the arts under one umbrella. To say that a kid learning a violin is providing this really you know, strong economic impact, uh, educational impact. And we have seen this program in Venezuela get translated to many places in uh, the United States and all over the world. One really, really important project that has started up recently is um, Maestro the Lions uh, after school program at Bethel AME Church here in Ardmore. And currently there are 10 kids in the program that are studying violin and they spend three days a week, a couple of hours each day, learning how to play violin and performing um, over half a dozen concerts each year. It's amazing to see what you would find a mile from this school. It's amazing what you'll find five miles. All of the traveling that I've done around the world, the thing that I've learned is that one of the worst things that a person could have, it's not them not having enough food or not having adequate housing, but it's people that think that the world has nothing to offer them and that they have nothing to offer the world. And that type of feeling is what will cause anybody to just shut down. Disappointments, being let down, being rejected. Society has a very good way of doing this, naturally. And after that happens, the kids that you see in this video, we'll lose them before they're 14, 15, or 16 years old. They're pretty much done. I believe that these kids can accomplish much more if given the opportunity. Now I have to say this, you all are products of having the best opportunities, really. I hope you, you, you realize that. And it's also all of our responsibility to help others. Now I didn't mean to get up here and give you this little pep talk. I'm 25 years old. I know nothing, or I wasn't really trained formally on how to raise money or how to design a program. But I do know that I'm really, really passionate about classical music and jazz. This is what I like to share with people. I could get up here today and I could perform at you and I could play lots of right notes and I could do it very musically and I could make it, make you feel like that it's completely effortless. This is what I was trained to do. This is what I started doing when I was eight years old and decided to focus on one thing, trumpet, for the entire time. Or I could all teach you trumpet. You could all see how hard it is to actually do what we do and, and also how rewarding it is. And we could probably make a much stronger connection. All of you have talents. All of you are good at things. And for 
all of the interests that you have, you could take kids through a program like this. They could spend three hours a day trying to figure out engineering or how to be a doctor. I don't know if you like to collect stamps or travel. You could certainly spend that amount of time and help to, to shape some of their lives. So the thing that uh, I, I feel very, very uh, proud of and very, very special is the ability of these kids to get the opportunities to work with the very best. The same conductors that I worked with when I was at the Curtis Institute, the same coaches, quality teachers, um, playing quality instruments as well. And this, I believe, is the future of the communities that we're shaping in Philadelphia. Next year, we will have 300 kids in three sites, all spending three hours a day learning how to focus on one instrument. We'll perform over 50 concerts throughout the area, from the biggest venues like the Mann Center to the Kimmel Center, all the way down to local churches, and even within their own schools, performing for their own parents, playing in nursing homes, hospitals. It's not about these kids becoming a professional. You can hear, those chords aren't perfectly in tune. Every single note isn't placed in the right place, but it doesn't matter. It's these kids working really, really hard. It's the same type of faith that I know that your parents and your teachers put in you. It's the same type of faith that we put in these kids. And let's watch what happens to them. Um, so I've been very, very blessed to be part of this. And the thing that I want to leave with all of you is that certainly um, don't be the one that feels that the world has nothing to offer you and that you have nothing to offer the world, because you all do. Um, very, very humbled and honored to be here and uh, look forward to hearing about a lot of great things that you're up to. Thanks so much.